Welcome everyone, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and today we're taking on painting the famous Morgan Kell of the Kellhounds. So a few months ago, I did a speed painting of Kellhounds Battle Max. I have a few of those guys sitting right here, where it took about 45 minutes to paint up one of these miniatures in Kellhounds colors. But today we're doing a heroic paint job, so I'm spending a heck of a lot more time just to get a lot nicer look and finish on the battle mech. If you're interested in the paint colors that I'm using, you can find a list of those in the description of the video below. And with that, let's start the painting. As usual with most of these battle mechs, I'm starting with a black primer base. And I'm using my 3D printed priming tool. You can find a link to my Etsy store where you can purchase the STL files for that priming tool in the description of this video. To begin the process of painting the black areas of the mech, I'm starting with a base gray color and just covering all the areas with that gray. Well, we're still early on in the painting process, but we have to make an important decision at this point. Where is our light source coming from? For my Morgan Kell mech here, what I'm going to do is have my light source kind of off the left shoulder to the front of the mech. You can see where I'm holding my hand right now, that's kind of where I'm thinking. What I need to do at this point is take some white paint, mix it in a little bit with the gray paint to get a lighter shade of gray, and I want to apply that shade to all the gray areas of the mech that are facing that light source. And you want to apply it in a way to where basically maybe three, two thirds to three quarters of each of the panels is that lighter shade of gray. Now this isn't a big distinction in shade of gray, just a little bit lighter. You're trying to get the idea of the light as reflecting off various parts of the mech. Now I'm going to repeat this process basically two more times. Each time I mix in a little bit more white to get a brighter shade of gray. And I'm covering the same areas I just did, but a little bit less area each time. For the next two steps, I'm switching over from a base brush to an artificer layer small brush. I'm going to live dangerously here for a moment and apply just a tiny amount of this off-white color to each of these panels in the areas I've been slowly, gradually getting lighter. Once all these layers have dried, it's time to take them from their gray to white color and darken them down to a very dark gray color while still allowing some of this gradient to show through. For this step, I'm going to use several layers of a black wash. However, I'm not using any pre-made washes because those are generally a little too thin for this process. We want to actually do some pretty significant color changes to our areas of the mech. As a result, I'm going to take a run-of-the-mill black miniature paint and water it down maybe about five parts water to one part paint, maybe a little bit more water. A little bit thinner paint in this area is not a big deal. If you do go down that path, just apply a few more layers of this paint. The end goal is you want something that's almost black, but you can still see some of the transition to a little bit of a darker, maybe mid-tone-ish gray at most on some of the highlighted areas of this mech. And one more quick note, be sure to let the wash dry between each layer. Now with the gray areas mostly done, we're going to move on to the red areas of the battle mech. First, we're going to take a dark red color and paint in all those areas of this miniature. Let's add a little bit more contrast to this base layer. It'll play into some of the steps coming down the road. Therefore, I'm going to apply a brown wash to all these dark red areas and just let that dry completely. This time, I am using a pre-made wash from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. Now we get to the fun part of the painting process, and by fun, I mean the part that requires a whole lot of very detailed brush control. We're going to be applying the standard Kellhounds Red to all the areas of the mech that require it. So take a detailed brush and very carefully apply this medium red color to each of the armor panels. Be careful not to get this paint between the armor panels and ruin the darker effect we just applied a little bit ago. It may take you two or three layers, but whatever it is, you want a nice even coat of this red by the time you're done with this step. See you in about an hour or so. One more quick step with our kind of basic Kellhounds Red. 
You want to use a crappy brush for this because it's going to be sort of a dry brushing type technique. But you need a little bit of detail control, so maybe a base brush that has a decent tip on it still. Take some of that red, wipe most of it off like you're going to do a dry brush, and very carefully go over the missile launchers where all the missile tubes are. If you do this right, you'll get the surface of the launchers turned red, but you won't get any paint down in the tubes themselves. With the base red done, we're going to move on to some highlighting steps. And just like the black areas where we put a little bit of a lighter color in the corners where our light was coming from, we're going to do the same thing for all the red armor panels. The key difference here is that we're not initially going to be mixing in white into our red. Instead, I'm going to be using a bright orange color. The reason for this is that it's going to brighten up the paint, but it won't desaturate it as much as if we use white. So we get more of a lighter red color versus a pink color which in this case for the highlights I think will look better. So remember where your light was coming from and kind of color in the armor panels from that direction with a little bit of the lighter color, maybe 35-50% of coverage of the panels, whatever looks good to you. You don't want a really bright color here, just a little bit of a brighter color. Mix in a little bit more orange, get a little bit brighter color and do this process one more time but with even less coverage. Let's go for one more layer with even more orange. Then finally, I'm gonna mix a little bit of white into this orange-red mixture just to get a nice bright edge in some of the surfaces. And I'm gonna apply this with a really fine detailed brush. Well, it's looking pretty good so far. All the major armor stuff is done. Let's move on to some details. First up are gonna be some of the actuators, vents, metallic things like that. And this is a three-step process. First, you're going to give those pieces a base coat of gray. Then you're going to dry brush a little bit of silver on them. And finally, you're going to coat them in a black gloss wash. In this case, I'm using non-oil from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. Just for effect, we're going to add a little bit of battle damage to this mech. And I'm going to do it in a way that gives the damage a bit of a 3D effect. The first step is to apply a little bit of base gray to where the battle damage would be. Essentially the painted armor is chipped off and you can see the metallic surface beneath it. Now step two is a bit tricky because you got to think about how light works. The light's going to come from wherever you've been using all this time to paint the miniature. It's then going to cross the boundary of the depression to where the chunk of the armor is missing and then it's going to hit the opposite edge. The opposite edge, because it's being hit with light, needs to be painted in a bright silver. Finally then, the edge is closer to the light source because it's going to be in shadow because the light's passing over it and there's going to be a little bit of shadow being cast by the fact that that part's below where the armor should be. You want to paint a little bit of a darker color, so take some black, mix it in with the gray, and line that area of the battle damage with a darker color. If you do it right, your final battle damage should have a bit of a 3D effect. So a few last little details here. I probably said that a while ago, but I do that on this show. Seriously though, we're going to paint the windshield and looking at the art card that comes with his miniature, it would appear that his windshield on his mech is a gray or silver color. So I'm going to paint it like that. Then finally, this is probably going to end poorly, I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to attempt to paint the black Kellhounds logo that kind of appears above the canopy in between the missile launchers. This ought to be fun. It's a small chance I'll ruin my entire paint job doing this too, yay. And with that, the Kellhounds have their leader. Now I didn't actually time exactly how long it took me to paint this miniature up, but probably three hours is not an unreasonable number in case you were curious. And that brings us to the end of the first heroic Battletech miniatures paint here on this channel. If you guys enjoyed it, I got at least one more of these kind of high quality things coming up. I have a blank marauder. 
right here. It's going to get the Lyran Guards paint scheme, except like I said, a more heroic, nicer looking thing. So if you want to see more of those Battletech paint jobs, go ahead and hit subscribe to get those videos when they come out, assuming YouTube will notify you. And then of course, also coming up here, we got more work on my Antweight Combat Robot. So with all of that, once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Thank you guys for watching and have a great week.